Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I am your host, Keisha King. Thank you for joining me today, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. Today is no different. I'm very, very excited about our topic today. During this wonderful holiday season, as we jump off with Thanksgiving coming up just this week, 2019, how exciting it is to give thanks. Today we have with us someone who knows all about giving and we're gonna to talk to her in just a minute, but we're tying it in with our homeless situation right here in Honolulu, Hawaii. As of January, 2018, Hawaii had an estimated 6,500 homeless people. So we are talking about nearly 10,000 who are houseless. Some are the working poor, some have mental health issues, but all have needs. And today's guest helps to meet those needs in a very practical way. And it just so happens that this month is the month when most of us think about giving and giving to others as well as our friends and family. Well, today we're going to talk to the co-founder of It Takes a Village, Carol Reynolds. So join me in welcoming Miss Carol Reynolds. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha, honey. It's so good to see you today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you so being much. here. Thank you. It is an opportunity for us to share some of what you're doing with It Takes a Village. So why don't you tell us, how did you get started with this organization of yours? Okay. So um, actually, we started off as a mentorship program ah. um, in 2000. We brought it back to Hawaii in 2011, but before that, in 2000, my husband and I were stationed, well, he was stationed in Maryland, mm -hmm. and I was uh, teaching at uh, elementary school, at a grade school, middle mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. and one of the, some of the children asked for help. They said, we need a step team, we need after school program or something like that. Mm -hmm. So six children came to my classroom, and I figured, mm -hmm. well, sure, I could do that. In Maryland. In Maryland. So you started uh, an after-school program an after in school Maryland. In Maryland. To help students who sought you out. They for came help. to me. Actually, they wanted to start a step team. Okay. And they didn't have one at their middle school. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know how to step, okay. but I will find someone who can. Now we should mention that for our viewers who may not know, a step team is what exactly? Um, it is a it is actually the tradition of most of the Greek so, uh, fraternities and sororities. Mm -hmm. um, it is older than that, of course. It's an African tradition of sharing dance and telling stories in, in the, in the African-American uh, culture. Okay. And the colleges had you know, adapted that program mm -hmm. or that style of dancing and performing and mm -hmm. showcasing their talents. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's what, and they have competitions. Yes. You know, in schools and things like that. So the middle school children wanted to be a part of that. They wanted to learn that. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to a couple of the sororities and fraternities. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was just going to be six children. Okay. 100 children showed up. Now stop right there. <laughs> you started with the idea of six children. Six children just wanting to learn to step. They can do some, you know, at school events, do mm -hmm. some... Um, after school or at lunchtime when they have the little things doing on, 100 children showed up. And wow. I'm like, well, how are we going to manage 100 children? Mm -hmm. um, I reached out again to our Masonic family. My husband was a Mason, and we reached out to the family. And there was also an African-American Heritage Committee uh, group on the base at okay. Fort Meade. Okay, Fort they, Meade in Fort Maryland. Fort Meade in Maryland. Right. And they jumped in to help. They said, well, sure. We'll help. Mm -hmm. Well, of those 100 children, of course, the principal had his uh, sp specific idea of who should be able to step and what mm -hmm. the criteria were mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it was if you have good grades, you can step. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like that because the children who did have good grades needed the confidence boosters. They mm -hmm. needed someone to believe that they can do something. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, we will keep them all. If they do not keep their grades up, mm -hmm. then they'll be cut from the team. Sounds good. Well, some of the children realized after stepping was hard, so mm -hmm. they said, Miss Carol, can we have a choir? 
Huh. So we created a choir. Amazing. One of the young fellas said to me, he says, my brother is a black belt. Can I start a karate team? And I'm like, well, sure. Mm -hmm. So we went to a local uh, dojo. I think dojo. It's called, mm -hmm. We went to a local dojo, mm -hmm. and he donated uh, the, the clothing, mm -hmm. and we started a karate team. Wow. We had, then of course, as an academic, as a mm -hmm. teacher, mm -hmm. I said, look, we have to have some sort of after school lesson. You must be mm -hmm. learning something else. Mm -hmm. So we had a math club, we had English club, and of course we were in the heart of culture. Yes. So they had to be a history, an African American history club or group. Mm -hmm. And we were able to take the children to the, the monument, we took them to the African Museum. Oh, wow. Some of, that, some of them were the first time they'd ever been on a train. Oh my and and so the program grew from there. I had lots of support, lots of help, mm -hmm. um, but we were active duty, okay. so that means we were leaving soon. Oh my! Um, and I left it in charge of a, a few people, mm -hmm. but those children eventually went on to high school, mm -hmm. and it wasn't well supported after that. So it lasted for about five years. It's still really good. Um, we were actually even awarded the Martin Luther King Drum Major Award in Maryland. Wonderful. I got some city citations and, you know, awards and things like that. Mm -hmm. So when we came to Hawaii, um, I met with some other women who were doing um, these luncheons in mm -hmm. Women's History Month. I went mm -hmm. to a, a luncheon. Now, what year did you arrive here? We got here, I want to say, in 2004. Okay, so 2004, 2004. you were here. Got to Hawaii. My husband got stationed here. Okay. That was the second time. We were here in the 1990s. Oh, goodness. So your history with Hawaii runs very deep. Very deep. I and love that. Actually, in the 1990s, I have a title here. Oh, so, what is your title? I am Mrs. Nubian Hawaii. Mrs. Nubian Hawaii. <laughs> yes. Guys, you heard it here first. We have Mrs. Nubian uh, Hawaii from 1996. The yes, beautiful Miss Carol Reynolds. Who knew? Oh, my I goodness. Love it. Right. So we came <laughs> back the second time around. Of course, I love community involvement, so I wanted to get back into doing something for the community. So at this particular event, I realized there were only um, active duty people. Young women, mm -hmm. if it's a luncheon about educating women about, you know, history of women, mm -hmm. we have to reach back. Yes. We, you, we, we and I can't keep telling the same story same to each stories. other. We That's have to right. reach somebody else. That's right. So I said, well, where are the young people? Who mm -hmm. are you talking to? Who are you inviting? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what do you want to do? I said, we need to reach the high schooler. Okay. We need to do something there. Mm -hmm. And so I said, Said, well, let's have a pageant. Okay. So we created the Empowerment Women's Pageant in the month of March to celebrate Women's History Month. Yeah. And we did that for five years. Okay. We graduated about 25 women total oh, over those five years. You know, we ha I mean, everybody came through, mm -hmm. the winners, and some of the mm -hmm. students stayed with us. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to tell you about in Maryland, mm -hmm. I followed, we kept 35 children of that program stay mm -hmm. with us as part of our, our mentorship program. I see. So you had a mentorship program in Maryland in for Maryland. approximately five years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you were able to graduate about 35 children. All the way through college. All the way through college. All the way through college. Starting in middle school. Starting in eighth grade. Wow. That's yes. a beautiful thing. Yes. And Facebook allowed mm -hmm. us to keep in touch. Amazing. Because before that, it was uh, Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and the we're really dating and ourselves we now. Really are. And the Yahoo writing letters, and MySpace, you know, yeah. And, and I didn't even have so a lot of them were handwritten letters, you know, all the yeah, handwritten notes. So this was some of the, um, like you know, I sent home to the parents. Oh my goodness! All my permission slips and things like that. We mm -hmm. had to handwrite them out on photocopy. Oh wow. You know, but they stayed in touch with but you. But they stayed in touch with sent me. And letters and, and mail email, and, and right, email. To keep in touch with them, you know. And, and that's how you know 35 students 35 who were students. in your program went all the way and all the to, way to and through college. Right. That's a feat in and, and of it, itself. I tell you, it was amazing. Yeah. So we came here, we did the pageants here, mm -hmm. and the, one of my truths 
is that mm -hmm. I started the program here because my, my daughter was going into middle school. Mm. I, was I taught middle school in Maryland. I yes. knew the environment. Yes. I needed to make sure that the people she had around her were the people I approved of. Exactly. I want to tell you, middle, I teach middle school currently, mm -hmm. and uh, when my children were in middle school, I'll say my firstborn, I would ask her every day if she'd lost her mind. <laughs> I just don't know. I think it, it's, it's a true thing. Mm -hmm. Things happen in middle school. Their hormones change. Oh. They have a little bit more independence. Girl. And so you kind of need to mm -hmm. participate in their life very Constantly. closely, it sounds like yes. you've done. Yes. So let's fast forward. So yes. you got involved here in Hawaii approximately 2004 mm -hmm. or 2004 and you started this program in an effort to stay involved with your own children but yes. also to help a greater part of a the greater community. part of it right. okay and so my daughter graduated uh -huh. and I decided I did what I was supposed to do mm -hmm. and you're done That's and I it. was done. no more no more I'm, I'm just going to go back to teaching mm -hmm. I was teaching third grade mm -hmm. um, Decided, you know, and then I got invited to a senior center mm -hmm. for a Christmas celebration. Okay. And they kept asking for things. Mm -hmm. Oh, can we have a pamper day? Can you come back and do this? Can you come back and do that? Uh -huh. And I was like, well, sure. Okay. And at the senior center, mm -hmm. someone said, oh, we're going to feed the homeless. Would you like to help? Okay. And I met a gentleman by the name of Kapua. Kapua. Kapua Tani. He mm -hmm. is the volunteer coordinator at the Next Step Health Center. And what year was that? That was 2011. Okay. All right. And, and the rest is and history. And the rest is history. Well, it can't be history because that's no. what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but I love yes. how this started in a very organic way where you were back in 2000 whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> working in Maryland to help in the community. Yeah. And reaching out beyond your own family is something that doesn't seem like it's new to you. Wow. I have a few pictures that I yes. want to share. We're going to put up. First of all, your organization, is it a nonprofit organization? It is a community nonprofit organization. Community. And show that again. Or it Takes a Village. Okay, so this is a community nonprofit. nonprofit. And it's It Takes a Village Hawaii because there are oh, many It Takes a Village. So It Takes so a Village Hawaii. Hawaii. Gotcha. Right. Yes. Now, why is it? Why do we distinguish that it's a community nonprofit? Um, because we are not a five hundred one c three. I do not get money from the state. So where do you get your funding? From the beautiful hearts of my volunteers. Beautiful. And right now, the chapel, actually Hickam Chapel at the base, mm -hmm. um, they are one of my, for lack of a better word, sponsors. Okay. They have adopted the program as oh. part of our community program in the chapel. I love and that. And they sponsor two of the meals I every see. month. All right. So let's take a look at some of the pictures of some of your sponsors or some of your volunteers. Yes. We'll see this group of wonderful people. They yes. look like they're having a good time. We had a blast right there. <laughs> that uh -huh. young lady in the picture, um, the one in the back, actually, she is the owner of Verna, um, Verna's Embroidery. Ah. Here in Hawaii, and she is a wonderful supporter of our program. She donates dishes, mm. and if I need something embroidered, you know, she will support. In our next picture, and our next picture, our next group, this group right. here, and this group are some of the men of the Masonic Lodge. That's my husband Wayne, the back. Okay. Um, and so they had just come from a meeting, see some of them in bow ties and uh -huh. suits and stuff, and they yeah. just came right they over. They look very for formal help. to serve dinner. I know, yes. And our next picture. Okay. Right, and these are some of my fa church family and Rotarians also. Oh, so you're a member of the Rotary. I am a member of the Hickam Pearl Harbor Rotary. I'm a Rotary Club. member as well. I know. East this too. All right. That's wonderful. <laughs> and our next picture. Okay. Ah, and these are one of this is one of the sororities that always support. Okay. Um, this is the, Alpha um, Kappa Alpha, Alpha sorority yes, supports. Yeah, that's All Ginger right. back there. Okay, wonderful. And is there one more? Oh, look at that large group. Yes, and actually, this was the night that uh, my Rotary Club actually sponsored, and we also do toiletry bags every year. I do them every three months. I see. We collect 
soaps, toil so shampoos, and we do. Mm -hmm. I call it purses with a purpose. Ah, oh, I love it. Yes. So a lot of people have different um, ways that they give. And when we come back from our break, we're going to talk about how people can give. And then you want to give a special thank you. I do. So wonderful. So you've been watching At the Crossroads, where we're having a wonderful discussion with the lovely Carol Reynolds, co-founder of It Takes a Village Hawaii. He's been doing a great job. And when we come back, we're going to continue right after this. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of Think Tech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Aloha and welcome back to At the Crossroads. I am your host, Keisha King, and today we want to say thanks for giving. And that thank you is coming from Carol Ren Reynolds, co founder of It Takes a Village Hawaii. So, welcome back, Carol. Thank you. It is such a pleasure to talk with you about your community nonprofit organization and how you all give back to the homeless. Who um, and you do this by way of feeding them, and people usually sign up. Yes. I know that's how it works for me, yes. right? And how can others get involved? For example, anyone who's watching right now, why don't you look right here at this camera All and right. let them know how they can get involved to support you? Well, we have a Facebook page. Um, it takes the village Hawaii, and you can send me a message. Um, I usually have a calendar of dates that are available that usually I get from the Next Step Shelter as to when a meal is needed. And you have to be willing to prepare, to purchase, to prepare and serve the food. I will usually show up to help you, to show you what the ropes are, how things are done, or even some of the volunteers at the shelter um, come out and help. And really that's it, that's what you need to do. Just be willing. So well, that's so easy. So go to your website, which is it takes a village it takes Hawaii. A village Hawaii dot com dot org. No, just it, it's a Facebook page. It's oh, not okay. a website. Okay, yeah. perfect. Even better. Yes. So go to your Facebook page. Send it me takes a message. A village Hawaii. Send a message mm -hmm. and say, "I want to, to help." That's it. I want to help. There are so many different organizations that do so many great things in the community. Mm -hmm. I've spent this year trying to talk to as many as I possibly could mm -hmm. to get the word out to say, this is what's being done in our community, and this is how you can help. I wonder, is there a larger network or nonprofit that organizes all the nonprofits to know who's doing what, when, where, and how? Have you heard of anything like that? Um, actually, a couple of years ago, I actually did work um, when Governor Abercrombie was in seat. No. Um, there is a workforce program that, but I think most of them were um, 501c3, so they I were see. getting money from the state. So they were okay. accountable to the state mm -hmm. for um, how much money they spend, where they spend it, how much they spend on each plate. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of the requirements. You had to set it, you know, portion it out to what you were giving the, the, the people mm -hmm. and things like that. So okay. if you are a 501c3 you would already kind of know how to mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. if you are not a 501c3 there mm -hmm. are many other programs there is a uh, i think it's called the Va aloha uh -huh. program yes. Yes. right i think her name is christine she christina does Bush. wonderful she here. right she does yes. wonderful stuff in the community mm -hmm. um as far as other organizations that I actually work with, you mm -hmm. know, I am a part of the Masonic family here on the island, okay. the Order of the Eastern Stars and the Masons, 
And as a community, we do a lot of programs also in the in the in in in, in Hawaii, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so they also they have adopted schools, which we donate mm-hmm. school supplies to. Yes, um, they, we do car washes. We even have um, some of the. Uh, Women in Need Shelter, mm-hmm. their program, we provide mm-hmm. baskets yes. for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, I mean, all you have to do is ask somebody. Mm-hmm. Everybody can help. Yes. You know, as long as your hands are open, mm-hmm. you have the opportunity to give and bless someone else. And that's the beautiful thing. Yes. It feels so good to give. And I try to express that so often is that when you are giving to others, it makes you feel good, which is not the intent. Mm-hmm. It's usually secondary. But you walk away feeling like you were the recipient of the greatest blessing. Yes, yes. My father used to say that you must never pray. You know, people are taught to do this to pray, right? Mm-hmm. He says, but that's a closed hand. How can God give you something if your hands are closed? He mm-hmm. said, so pray with your hands open. Mm-hmm. Uh, people can take what they need. But somebody will always give you what you need. Amen. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. So now... We heard about the, um, you just mentioned someone who is sponsoring two meals for you all. Yes, um, the Pickham Chapel. Pickham Chapel. So I know you want to give them a special shout out I and do. thank you. I would love to thank my church family. Um, the Hickam Chapel, her, her name was Chaplain Hughley. She was the first one who said, you know what? You're always feeding the homeless, so let us be a part of that. Mm-hmm. So I have a total of about 50 volunteers. Active volunteers wow. that at any moment, you know, are part of it. They can go out and five or six times um, mm-hmm. a month. Yeah. They help doing something in the community, yeah. collecting clothing or feeding the homeless. Um, and so I would like to give a special thanks out to my church family. Mm-hmm. You know, Chaplain mentioned, I know he will be, if he's watching, he's waiting for me to say his name. Say it again, just to <laughs> make sure Chaplain mentioned, you. Chaplain Sean mentioned, he's the wing chaplain at the Hickam Chapel. and really the one who has to sign off and say, yes, mm-hmm. you can do this. But mm-hmm. then there's Sergeant Rodriguez, there's Adela, there's Miss Donna Moorfield, um, a Chaplain Rowe, right? Mm-hmm. Just the whole family, everyone the there specifically, mm-hmm. I would love to thank. And then all of the other volunteers, Merry, Happy Thanksgiving, not Merry Christmas yet, <laughs> but Happy Thanksgiving to you all, you know, all of the sororities, uh, members of the links, uh, Sandra Sims and Carolyn. Um, these are just women who just, you know, I just have to, I just have to wave and, and they come and support me. You mm-hmm. know, um, the Deltas. Libra is no longer an island, but that's my girl. Mm-hmm. But all, all of the sororities. I don't okay. want to pick anyone out in particular, but mm-hmm. all of the sororities, all of the fraternities, all of the Masonic families. I think of anybody else. You, and, Keisha. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, Keisha did a Facebook post and, and called me out. And we're called out for support. That's yes, what I mean. Called I called out, out for, for support. They called out for support and people mm-hmm. showed up. They did. You know, they and did. so I just love it. I have my women's group, Women to Women, just everyone. Everyone mm-hmm. who over the years have played a, a part. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one particular woman. She's no longer on the island, but her name is Maxine. We mm-hmm. called her Mama Maxine. Mm-hmm. Um, she has the heart. She truly has the heart of a servant, mm. and her daughter Alicia. You know, I will send her the link so she can share it. They now live in yes. Texas, and um, but she has been my driving force. Every time I want to do something, or I, if I don't want to do something, mm-hmm. I just think about she will say, "Get up, Carol, and go do it. Keep moving." Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's the thing. I think that it's beautiful people like you and Maxine who have that heart to do for others in a very practical and realistic way, meeting their basic needs, food, shelter, and clothing. Yes, ma'am. That's it. I do have one special more request. Oh. One special thank you okay. to my, the other half of my co-founders, Miss, <laughs> Mr. William T. Reynolds III. Uh-huh. I couldn't do any of this without him. Um, I was talking to a gentleman outside, and he says, he says how do you, how are you can afford to do all of this? I said, I just know where my blessings are. Mm-hmm. I have two wonderful children, Malachi and Gabrielle, who, to, they they were raised this way, mm-hmm. and so I love to see them do it in the community and go back out there and give also, and I can call them at any moment. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I'm still mama. That's right. So, uh -huh. but you know, I, they do it because they want to, not because they have to. Right. So I want to say a special thank you to them. And I think that's wonderful since you mentioned your daughter earlier and being closer to her in middle school probably guided her so that she could make better choices or good yes. choices for friends. Yes. But I think also having parents who give in the way that you give and support others in the community also makes a difference in shaping a child. I, so thank I you. Thank you. Yes. thank you for your example. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for giving people like myself and others an opportunity to give. Um, I never could have imagined that when I came here, I would get involved in the ways that I have um, or that I would be accepted in the ways that I have because of getting involved. And I thank you for the group that you have of people around you, all the groups, all the organizations, yes. um, and just the wonderful influence that you have on the entire island. So. It's Thanksgiving. I want to say to you, thank you for giving so thank much. Thank you, my darling. Thank you. Yes. And thank you for being here with us today. Yes. You've been watching At the Crossroads, where we've been having a wonderful conversation with Carol Reynolds. You know, people often talk about the homeless and what they could do and how many programs, and they're getting food for free, or they're getting so much help, but they won't change their lives. You know, it's not really as easy as it seems. It's not easy for you in the way that you live, no matter how wonderful it is, you still have challenges. And those with mental health issues or financial issues, they have challenges too. And it may be just this one kind act of a meal that changes the trajectory of their life. So rather than complain, this Thanksgiving, be sure to give thanks for what you have and in your own unique way, reach back and give to others. It'll make you feel good. This I know from personal experience. And please remember that you can go on Facebook and reach out to It Takes a Village Hawaii and talk to Carol, send her a message and say, I want to get involved. I want to make a difference in the lives of others. Please do it. It's the holiday season. There's no better time than right now. Thank you so much for watching at the crossroads. We'll see you next time. Aloha.